manufacturer's point of view about uh, safety of course and the service, a pre-trip inspection, things like that. Um, being number two uh, in, in line here, I just want to reiterate just uh, everything that Russell had said about the approach of the machine, the side that the service uh, points are on the machine and that. Before I get started with that, I got one more little thing I want to share with you is how we approach the job, how we come to the job, with what state of mind we start out with in the morning. Uh, a lot of times preoccupation, uh, your mind's adrift a little bit, your head's not in the game with whatever domestic issues, whatever life deals you financial, with times being what they are and that, it's, it's easy for mind, uh, one's mind to wander off of what truly is gonna matter to you as you, as you come on that job site every day. And uh, the reason I say that, if your head isn't in the game, these things, these machines are not to be taken lightly. They can either be a tool to help you uh, to get your task during the day, or they're big enough, they're powerful enough, they got enough uh, weight in them and everything to become a weapon. I mean, uh, a lot of times people talk about the kind of accidents that happen. Uh, a lot of times are, uh, uh, safety uh, aspect of it is just maybe falling off the machine when trying to do daily inspections and getting up on the machine, cleaning windows uh, or uh, fueling the machine and things like that, that even though that, uh, the deck or the, the uh, step areas on this machine might only be four feet off the ground, that's a long ways to fall, especially if your head would impact something like that. But if you imagine approaching your job first thing in the morning, disgusted at whatever or uh, a little despondent and that, it's not a very safe thing to do and if you could just take a minute or two and breathe if you must and and try to collect get yourself collected to get ready it's kind of like it's kind of like bulldog and steers a little bit if you can't get the horse to collect a little bit he's going to break the barrier and you're not going to catch your catch your steer very well and same thing with this if, if one's mind isn't in the game and we're not focused or whatever we're going to make mistakes we're going to take shortcuts a lot of times and you say well i run this grader every day and uh, maybe I don't need to look at a lot of the different points on this grader uh, service points every day because, well, I just visited that. I just greased that and I looked over the machine two or three days ago or whatever. But as you put a lot of time, hours on the machines, uh, the, the kind of work, the kind of grueling work you put the machines through or whatever can, can have damaging and wearing effects on the machine. So anyway, as we approach the grader from that side, uh, I've got this blade up in, a, in what we call a maintenance position and a blade change position uh, which would inhibit my ability to get in behind this blade to, to enter the cab from this side but just for the sake of, of service I wanted to put it in this position now uh, this, this blade is up in a position where there's, there's uh, energy stored there's, we don't have a release of free energy state on this mold board right now when it's like this. Although there are lockouts built into the blade lift circuits that should keep it from, from uh, falling away, falling on the ground or pinching you or whatever, it always be advised and whatever your policies will be from your garages or whatever that you'd want to put some stands under this. Now the reason I, I, I propose to you uh, a maintenance position like this as we get a little older or maybe if you're younger and you got a uh, uh, an athletic injury or anything like that, these, these cutting edges, you know, weigh in excess of 100 pounds a piece and that, and if you're underneath the machine trying to manhandle them and that, you know, you're going to have lower back issues and shoulder and elbow issues and things like that. But if we put it in a position like this, with all safety constraints put in uh, uh, stands or whatever, so that it's safe to do so, and remembering always not to get between the machine and the mold board like that, we can address this hardware with our inches and everything, and the cutting edges will stay in the frog of that mold board. They sit up there just like they're on a, on a uh, workbench. And you, when you uh, slide this mold board out a little bit and get it after you got through the door or whatever, you can get that mold board far enough out here that you'll be able to slide them on and off the tailgate of a pickup. You can be the right height for service, things like that. Work with your hardware, clean the area real well to put those cutting edges on and things like that. So. Uh, and, and I'm going to uh, reiterate a lot of the service points on this grader uh, later on as we go through the 
uh, walk around in that, but while we're in this position, as well as talking about cutting edge wear points, uh, replacements and things like that, we can also look at the condition of our circles, our circle shoes, the ring and pinion for the circle rotation and everything. We have wear inserts here that can be looked at and we can judge by, by the specifications given in the operator's manual about how much clearance we'd have here in our, in our wear in our shoe, uh, replaceable shoes, wear inserts, and be able to uh, judge accordingly and be able to replace accordingly. Now with this machine being banked out here in the, in the left position, it's, uh, it's going to allow us free state of energy to be able to, uh, with no weight, on the lower three shoes down here in the bottom. So we could put this blade clear up in vertical position. We'd be able to, to uh, make those replacements as necessary. We don't have to loosen the hardware in the circle shoes. All we have to do is, is uh, address the 3 8 hardware that holds the plates and holds those wear inserts in place like that. We would be replacing just the three on the lower side being the weight is off of those shoes on that side and then we'd be able to rotate over to the other side and, and replace those inserts as well. Again, just reiterating that, that uh, if, when we do that, we're not having a manhandle and handling weight and, uh, and, uh, and things standing on our head or whatever trying to replace or adjust the circle and side shift uh, wear inserts and things like that. So with that, again starting out, if this blade were up underneath the machine, we'd be approaching this side of the grader and, uh, and putting our safety gear in the, in the cab, as Russell had mentioned, things like that. As we approach this grader, we can start looking for uh, hardware degradation, you know, things that are getting ready to fail, things that don't look right to us as our eyes sweep over the machine. Is there a hose out of place? Is there a, a leaky point on the machine? Are we, are we seeing any cracks in the frames, M missing lights or mirrors, broken glass? Uh, perhaps even uh, if there had been vandalism from that prior night or whatever, you'd be able to approach the machine and determine something doesn't look right and would, would warrant some investigation on that uh, to look at that. Uh, loose or missing hardware, tire and wheel hardware, uh, the, the condition that the tires are in or inflation on the tires. And I want to talk a little bit more about that later too, about how it ha has effects of having proper inflation to stabilize that motor grader as you're blading and everything else. But we would want to look as before we even approach the engine oil check, transmission oil check, hydraulic oil check and things like that, we'd want to maybe suggest to you that you look for these conditions to occur. A complete walk around the machine to check for those things. Again, lights, pre-cleaner, muffler, looseness, missing hardware, things like that. How, uh, how would we determine if we're having some uh, frame uh, uh, crack issues on a machine? What kind of evidence would it give me that there's po possibly a problem getting ready to happen on a, on a mainframe on a, on a grader. Any of you guys got an idea? We'd start to see a crack and a little bit of rust coming from in behind the paint. We might even see a little bit of clearance between the two welded pieces or whatever. And uh, what about hardware, this loose thing? What would I look for there? Wheel hardware, frame hardware, uh, attachment points for our tools? Yep, there might be rust coming out from behind washers or heads, bolts, things like that. Uh, and then just the, the physically being able to see a gap be, between a head and a mounting point in those holes and things like that. So as we're going along and, uh, and one of the bones of contention is on motor graders too and, and other equipment is that they come with uh, operator's manuals. They're supposed to be in the cab in the compartment they're designed for, but a lot of times when the machine's new, uh, the mechanics, the shop guys, or whatever, take them out and they put them in a cabinet somewhere, and you don't have that along. But all graders have a, a legend, if you will, a periodic service chart, pretty pretty close to where your daily checks are. And if we look inside that main service area in a motor grader, we're going to see a periodic service chart here in this case on the John Deere, on the engine oil check side of the engine compartment. Everybody can look there. So if I ever have any questions about where 
in the scheme of things, where on this motor grader there's a service point that I need to know what it is, what kind of lubricants it uses, whether it be oil or grease, and where in, in, in that map of that machine, where is that located, that particular service point. And I can look on this, on this machine's legend, this periodic service chart, and be able to locate that and it'll point it out to me. And then I can uh, go right over to the chart and look at the hours, intervals, of service suggested and see at, at what time is appropriate to go ahead and, and, uh, and give that uh, service on that particular point. So if the operator's manual is missing, we're always going to have that to, to, uh, to, to give us reference to where on this grader and what, what time and what kind of lubes are gonna give the, we're going to need to give that kind of service to. So again, engine oil, check. Transmission oil check and fills, both of those fills here. We have uh, electrical service shut off master switch on that same side. Uh, it's a good vandal proofing to be able to shut the power off to this machine and close and lock the, the side shields when you leave at night and everything else. And they're not gonna be able to get any power to, to start the machine with uh, without that being reconnected on the same side of the machine. And while we're looking in there, and we've checked in engine transmission oils, things like that, we can look at conditions of hoses, clamps, hose routings, cables, uh, anything chafing, anything getting ready to fail or anything like that. We run our eyes across that, look at belts, and see if we've got a, a flapper or one that's cracking or whatever, you know, anything that's getting ready to fail there. Looseness, shivs, uh, uh, if there's looseness in a belt or anything like, like that. We're, probably going to have to attend to that rather than take off. Uh, in, er, hydraulic oil check is this reservoir right above the pumps next to the radiator. While we're looking at that and, and assure ourselves that we have proper amount of oil in the reservoir in reserve, we can look at the condition of the coolers, the radiators and everything else and see how much trash might be uh, starting to build up on that that could cause us problems later on a hot day or anything like that. Trash that also uh, uh, that can ignite. I mean, these motor graders uh, generate a lot of heat in and around their engine and stuff, up around the turbochargers and things. You have the fine grasses and leaves and things that start to accumulate. Uh, these engines are, are higher up in the emission standards now, federal government emission standards, and they requ require a lot more heat in order to do a cleaner burn on, on the fuel and exhaust and things like that. So we're looking at higher temperatures around in the engine compartment that and once you want to bear uh, uh, a lot of consideration about the cleanliness of that area so that you don't have anything that would ignite and cause a fire or whatever. You kind of think more in terms of forestry equipment or dozers or anything like that that's clearing and working in there that accumulates a lot of that but when you're working shoulders and there's grass and stuff and it's swirling around it's going to pick some of that up from the bottom of the engine. The fan's going to try and drive that into the into the coolers and around the belly pans and nest in around the electricals and everything else on the grader. Um, when we've completed the walk around, we've checked our lights, make sure they all work, uh, flat.